Good morning. The skies are grey. So let's talk about mood. Um, one of the cardinal presenting symptoms of low testosterone is an element of low mood, anxiety and or depersonalisation. It can be mild, it can be moderate and it can be really quite severe. I've just got off the phone with one of my guys who has a history of PTSD and he had suicidal ideation prior to testosterone replacement therapy. He tells me that he no longer has these negative thoughts. Obviously, it doesn't wipe away PTSD, but normalising his melandrin levels has given him the ability to seize life by the balls. So I'm so, so happy for him. Now this is not an isolated story. We have other guys who have been suicidal, actually suicidal, and testosterone replacement therapy has reversed this nasty, nasty thought process. And they are now taking life and moving forwards. Incredible, absolutely incredible. However, you cannot compare your journey to the next person's journey. Depression, anxiety, depersonalization, it's multifactorial. And whilst optimizing your melandrin levels can have a significant impact, especially if the cause of your negative symptoms is low testosterone, it isn't everything. So you have to have the right attitude. That's not to say guys who are still struggling don't have the right attitude, but it's a very, very complicated subject. You can't just wipe away 20 years of abuse. You can't wipe away the death of XYZ. You can't wipe away these uh, tragic life events by normalizing melandrin levels. But hopefully it will give you the foundation that you need to address the things that need addressing. So along with these negative generic things, low mood, depersonalization, anxiety, how do people feel with low testosterone? They, send, they seem to lose their sense of normality they lose their sense of perspective. Things that would not have bothered them before are now right up there. They actually understand the irrational nature of their thoughts. And this often comes out as irritability. It's funny, isn't it? Low testosterone, you think, mm, mm. but this often manifests itself in a frustration. And that frustration should not be underappreciated because the people that we tend to hurt, are not the people we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, although road rage is quite funny. Everybody's very brave in their car, aren't they? I just open my boot and go, come on then. <laughs> Come and have a go at two working German shepherds. <laughs> see, how, see how brave you are now. Um, no, I'm joking, obviously. But we tend to take it out on our nearest and dearest. Because we can, we can get away with loads, can't we, when we're talking to our family and friends. Because hopefully they understand us uh, and hopefully they will be more accepting than Joe Public. But it's hard because you're hiding your true self and you're hiding your true nature. And it's of no fault of your own. Well, often it is a fault of your own. You've done gear or you've done a lot of drugs and blah, blah, blah. But 
you shouldn't really be blamed for that. What should you be blamed? Nah, no regrets, bollocks to that. But we've all made mistakes. We've all made countless mistakes. Um, and even if you haven't made a mistake, we live in a poisonous society. Endocrine disruptors, etc., etc. Processed crap that we eat. We live in a world of stress. An artificial stress. A peculiar stress that, as human beings, how we've evolved, we should not be exposed to that stress. The internet, the internet's poison, absolute poison. Um, it just breeds narcissism and insecurity. You you look for your dopamine hits, and you question, and you feed cognitive bias. It's um, it's a horrible place. So, normalising your melandrin levels will hopefully bring about a semblance of normality. Now, what happens if you do not have that semblance of normality? You obviously need to have a look at your protocol. Is the ratio of testosterone to estrogen wrong? Are you running too high? Because paradoxically, everybody thinks, you know, running super high be alpha male. Well, that's absolute garbage. If you look at guys who run high, look at your bodybuilders. They're great when you're agreeing with them. They're arseholes when you're not. So it gives you an idea of some character flaws that people that run high have. And it's lacking empathy, it's lacking insight. And perhaps normalising those levels will actually change their character. Because you know damn well, when you presented with low testosterone, you didn't feel like you. So conversely, when you're running high, you're not you. What does running high mean? We want you to have normal, not average, because average is bad, because we're, we live in a sick society, normal melandrin levels. And you can tell when, you're, when you have normal melandrin levels because the other physiological parameters, such as hematocrit, HDL, LDL, blood pressure, are normal alongside it. The psychological impact of high testosterone some people are very blind to. So how should you feel on TRT? You should feel appropriate to the situation. What does that mean? Well, when you're resting, you should feel calm. When you're in the gym, you should feel alert. You should have that ability to adapt to your environment, to your surroundings, to the situation. So a lot of guys, when they say that they're optimized, they say, well, in a situation, in an aggressive situation, I actually feel calmer. In a stressful situation, I feel calmer. And that's absolutely wonderful to hear. That's what we want. We don't want you escalating situations that don't need escalating. We always talk about balance. Super important. So guys that run high, they lack that perspective. Estrogen. Estrogen's a big topic. Give me strength. Um, guys that run high on estrogen, so their ratio of testosterone to estrogen is incorrect. I always say they're whiny little bitches. Well, they are. Um, and funnily enough, when we normalise the testosterone to estrogen ratio, I often get an apology. So I feel better now, Doc. I said, yeah, I knew you would. Um, but often it's a rite of passage. So there's a lot of misinformation abounded over the internet about estrogen. Estrogen is incredibly important. Mood, libido, bone strength, cardiovascular health, spermatogenesis, etc., etc. It's 
thought of by some plonkers as simply a paracrine hormone. So just affecting the organ it's produced in or, or the next organ. However, it is an endocrine hormone. How do we know it's an endocrine hormone? Well, you just have to have a basic understanding of physiology and pathology. So very briefly, pathology-wise, an obvious example is the HPG axis, the hypopatriotary gonadal axis. Estrogen has a negative feedback on the hypothalamus and pituitary, so it doesn't send gonadotrophin releasing hormone down and then subsequently LH and FSH down. It's constantly self-regulating. If it was simply a paracrine hormone, then you would be reliant on testosterone entering into the brain and being converted by the aromatase enzyme in the brain, and that would be having the sole effect on the hypothalamus and maturity. That's stupid. So there is a systemic effect, an endocrine effect, and that's what's important for the HPG axis. Let's also convide, um, consider endothelial lining, so cardiovascular health. That is an endocrine effect of estrogen. So we should measure estrogen and to consider to, and to uh, oh, geez, give oh. Um, to tell people that they shouldn't measure estrogen because it's a paracrine hormone uh, just shows a basic lack of understanding of basic physiology. We know from controlling, not blocking, controlling estrogen levels that mood significantly improves with a normal testosterone to estrogen ratio. Significantly. So, we should pay attention to estrogen levels. There is no comparison, no comparison whatsoever with PSA and prostate cancer, which was an analogy made by somebody. Prostate specific antigen, it is specific to the prostate. It is not specific to prostate cancer. Prostate cancer can occur with normal PSA because a lot of prostate cancers actually grow on the outside. And it's not until they're quite advanced and take over the prostate does the PSA become grossly elevated. But prostate specific antigen, we'll say it again, prostate specific antigen, not prostate cancer, can be elevated in other things like benign prostatic hypertrophy, urine infections, prostatitis. Give me strength. You cannot make that analogy, and it's an idiotic analogy. So we do measure PSA because it gives you an indication of an issue with the prostate, not prostate cancer. But let's, a little bit of a tangent, let's talk about estrogen again. So, monitoring estrogen. Yes, it gives us an idea of where we want to be. We do have a range. Some may call it bro science, but that bro science is extended now into clinical practice and we are seeing positive effects from a normal testosterone to estrogen ratio. Now there are some people who say you should control estrogen by simply raising the testosterone dose. Now we have a propensity to aromatization conversion of testosterone to estrogen because of an increase in adiposity because there's the aromatase enzyme in fat cells and because we pollute our liver little livers livers with all sorts of chemicals and alcohol so you will have an abnormal testosterone to estrogen ratio now if you are aromatizing too much what happens estrogen goes to the hypothalamus and pituitary and essentially tricks the hypothalamus and pituitary and says you've got plenty of testosterone when you don't have plenty of testosterone you've just got a propensity to excess aromatization so if you address that often you can improve 
your natural production of testosterone, which is something that every man should do prior to considering testosterone replacement therapy. Treat the cause, not the outcome, to effect a long-term sustainable change to physical and psychological well-being. I hope this is sinking in. So, mood. We want you to be happy. We want you to be healthy. Oh, I think I've said enough. Oh, um, yeah, have a good day, guys. Shh.